Welcome back to another video on the Evolution Simulator project, name still not decided. If you're new here, then here's a very quick rundown on what this is. Have you ever wanted to feel like God? Well, with this, you can kind of get the feel for it by overseeing the evolution of lots of these little creature things. Now, these little guys have one goal, and that's not dying, which you could probably relate to. Dying does suck. But these creatures need to figure out how exactly you don't die with their AI neural network minds that can learn. And if they do live long enough to eat some pellets and then lay some eggs, they will hatch into the next generation to then continue the cycle yet again. And this goes on forever and ever till time itself has no meaning. Or you close the program. Okay, caught up? Let's go on with this. Right now, the creatures have a slight problem. They're not that smart. They use an algorithm called neat to learn which compared to nearly every other kind of algorithm is not that good. So I'm going to hold a competition, a fight to the death between two groups. A group of creatures that will be using a neat algorithm to learn, and another group that uses another, much more powerful algorithm. And these two groups will be put in the same simulation, and whichever one outcompetes the other and is the last one standing will be declared the winner. And that will hopefully be the new algorithm as if it isn't, then this would have all been a huge waste of time. Okay, in one corner, we have Neat, a genetic algorithm that works something like this. Imagine we had this guy that was really good at living. A real smart guy. Uh, they just did all the right things. He now has a child, or well, children, that are all exact copies of him. Except we shake them vigorously until they have severe brain damage. Now that their brains have been mixed up a little, there is probably at least one child that was mixed up in such a way that they're now smarter than their father. Now, that's a slight oversimplification of how it works, but the general idea is that NEAT works by taking a pre-existing neural network and just randomly changing it. And if this new network is better and makes the creature smarter, then that creature will get more food, have more children, and then eventually every creature will have that kind of network because it just outcompetes all of them. But this algorithm, like everything I've done so far, has issues. If you shake a baby, you're probably not going to get the next Einstein. Either you get nothing but a shaken up baby, which is preferable to the other outcome being the next Stephen Hawking, but if he wasn't smart. The whole algorithm relies on just randomly changing things, so the only reason it even works at all is because it's done by simulating a lot, and I mean a lot of neural networks, so that the odds of neat working and making a better neural network aren't just zero. And can you even call that learning if a creature ends up in some death zone that kills you, and somehow it makes it out alive, it's not going to just start avoiding it as it can't learn from what happens. For it to avoid them, it has to hope that its brain mutated in the right way before it has even seen one. So I introduced a competitor, the policy gradient algorithm. Now this algorithm is very different compared to NEAT, as NEAT is a genetic algorithm, but the policy gradient algorithm is a reinforcement learning algorithm. So, unlike Nate being all trial and mostly error, it works by doing things and actually learning from them, which is a bit more complicated. Let's imagine we have this creature called uh, Bob. Yeah, that's, a, that's original. And I want him to learn how to survive using policy gradients. Step one, we put all Bobby in a simulated world. Well, the step before that is you need to give it a randomized neural network, but that's not important. Then afterwards, you just let him free in the world. And in this example, if he touches a food pellet, he gets a positive reward. And if he touches that red blob thing, he gets a negative one because it makes him die or something like that. But right now, this won't work because even if he touches a food pellet for that sweet, sweet positive reward, all Bobble knows that the thing he did was good, so he'll just keep doing that exact thing and his brain won't change. And if he gets a negative one, he will know that he did a bad thing, but he won't know how to improve as all he knows is to, instead of doing the one thing he just did, he should instead try doing one of the near infinite other things he could do. He needs some constructive criticism. So you introduce a bit of randomness. Uh, turn that sober driver into a drunk one that's not too scared to find a few shortcuts. Uh, now when he does something and gets a reward, he knows three things. What he did, what he would have done without that randomness, and the reward. If that reward is positive, then his brain will use the power of backpropagation to update his entire brain, not just a single connection like Nate. 
A positive reward means that the thing he just did because of his randomness was good and his brain should update that in the same situation he will do that again and not what he was supposed to do. But if the thing he did was negative, then instead that random action he did was bad and his brain should update so that it will try and do the opposite of that action in the same situation. So let's code that. Should be simple, right? Why did I ever think of making this video? You know, I could just be spending my time just doing nothing and just lazing about. You wanna know something about me? I have no clue why I'm doing. Like, look at this. What were they smoking when they came up with this formula? You know you're too far gone when even the subscript have a subscript, and the letters are starting to wear little tinfoil hats, because even they know this is insane. Well, this is even the formula for policy gradients, but PPO, which is a modified version that requires more effort to implement, and even requires a multiple neural network, so that can be done for another video. But it is a policy gradient one if you're wondering, I think. Yeah, when I search for it, it gives me lots of different ones. Uh, why did I ever think I should do this? I just keep giving myself more work. It doesn't help that all the tutorials for anything beyond basic AI stuff. Uh, it's just awful. You know, if you want me to release a proper tutorial on stuff like this, then just leave a comment down below, as most of them just cover the theory of what happens, but never actually explain what exactly happens. And if they give a code example that isn't pseudocode, it's in Python using something like TensorFlow or some other library, so I'll not only need to learn the algorithm, but I'll also need to learn how to use whatever Python stuff they were using to figure it out. Or maybe I'm just stupid. Whatever, let's just continue. Okay, let's set the stage. This will start out with 100 creatures with randomized brains in random places. Half will use neat and the other half will use policy gradients. So let the simulation begin. Uh, a little side note while this is running, there will be a slight intervention as it'll start off with the food giving more energy than normal, as having completely random brains does make for some very special creatures. So I'll make it easier for them at the start, but when the population reaches around 500, I'll decrease how much energy it gives, as by then they should have learned how to survive, you know, okay enough. Oh, uh, uh, what if I run it again? Oh. Uh, uh, okay, okay. I need to explain one thing. With reinforcement learning, you have these things called hyperparameters, and they're just some magic numbers you choose that mean different things. Like, for example, how long a neural network remembers stuff, the rewards different things give, how much it learns from things, that sort of stuff. And this stuff needs to be decided beforehand, as you kind of need them for these things to work. And the values I chose for my hyperparameters were... Uh, well, I just made them up on the spot based on completely nothing. Yeah. Now I could spend my time tweaking the networks to find out the best hyperparameters. Or I could create a monster. You know how I've got policy gradients in neat? What if they were... mixed? So when a creature is born, it gets scrambled with neat. And as it lives, it learns policy gradients. New networks, new time lapse. Uh, this time, a third are neat, third policy gradient, and a third this weird hybrid thing. I really hope this works. <laughs>
Okay, that's more like it. it. You know what, let's run it nine more times and tally up a score. Okay, I know this looks bad, but it isn't as bad as you might think. For the keen-eyed here who have a basic understanding of how to count, two plus three plus two is in fact not 10. So here are the population graphs for every run and a couple actually result in total extinction from not being able to adapt to the energy drop after they reach 500. Well, except this one. These guys didn't even reach anywhere near 500. It was over before it even started. I didn't count these ones in the total, but if you look at them, the times that there was a total extinction was also the time where the hybrid networks died off really early due to bad luck. And it always ended on either a neat network or a policy gradient network dying, and never a hybrid one. And they only really won in the final count by just one point. So you know what? I'm just gonna count that as a win. Now, I'm gonna keep filling with this to find the best hyperparameters, like I said earlier, probably from them evolving the best ones because I'm lazy and hate testing, but now I can finally move on from this. Now, the next major thing to do, evolving bodies. They all look the same and only really change slightly. And I want them to evolve stuff like limbs that move and bodies that are weird and different. I've been saying this since the first video on this, if I get this to work, then I could probably get plant evolution working, and hopefully later on I can get predation to not be bad and actually work good. Though before I do that, I'm gonna need to first optimize the simulation a bit, as even though it's a lean, mean simulating machine, it still wouldn't hurt to clean it up a bit, as doing evolving bodies will require a complete physics engine overhaul, as it is just awful. It's the simplest, dumbest thing ever. And getting the evolving bodies done will take a while as I don't really know where to start. Like, I have a few ideas, but nothing really past that. So, hopefully I can make it through though. But we'll just have to wait and see. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, like, comment something, and subscribe to make the algorithm like me more. And see you in the next video.